Hi, class, and welcome to chapter 13. Um, we're going to start off, we're going to do chapter 13 in two parts, and there's also two other videos. So in all, there'll be four videos that you'll be watching. You're watching a video up, up front um, that will kind of explain the notion of the different types of financial institutions and the types of um, debt. And then you will watch these two, and then you'll follow up with a final presentation that'll talk about the national debt and the national deficit. So savings and investment, the financial system. That's where we're gonna start, if we're lucky. I hope you guys are all doing well, and I do hope that things are going pretty well for you all. All right, so what are financial intermediate? institutions well financial institutions are involved in two different types so there's the financial intermediaries which are institutions in which savers can indirectly provide funds for borrowers what do you mean by that i mean banks if you think about it a bank is a financial intermediary why because you don't lend money directly to your neighbor for a house the bank lends the money to the neighbor for the house they arrange all the appraisals, etc. all you are doing is providing that money in to the bank in the form of your savings. Mutual funds are institutions that sell shares to the public and use those proceeds to buy stocks and bonds. So they're allowing you to provide your money into a mutual fund that then mutually buys stocks and bonds, thus mitigating the risk across many more people, but also allowing you to expand your portfolio by investing in things that you might not invest in just because you don't have the time, effort, or energy to do so. Remember when we were talking about the GDP before and we talked about why? And we said, okay, well, the GDP is equal to all the consumption of all the individual households plus the investment in the economy plus government purchases plus the net exports minus imports. Remember this, this is C plus I plus G plus NX, and I think I told you that you're gonna keep seeing this. Well, we're gonna use this again to kind of show how economies work and how accounting works and savings and investment works in an economy. If you assume that there's a closed economy and there is no net exports and imports, very similar to kind of what may be happening with the coronavirus where we may be closing off a lot of our ports. If we have a closed economy, in other words, we don't export or we don't import at all, then our GDP just becomes a function of C plus I plus G. So if you do a little algebra and you take C and G away from both sides, minus C minus G, as you can see over here on the Y side, and then minus C minus G over on the C plus I plus G, the C is going to cross itself out, the G is going to cross itself out on the right side, and you're going to end up with just the I left. So now you have I on one side and you have Y minus C minus G. So what are we saying? We're saying here that the investments in the economy are equal to the GDP minus consumer spending minus government spending. This equivalates to the national savings because the national savings is the total amount of income the economy has remaining after it pays for consumption, C, and government purchases. So by definition, savings also has to be equal to Y minus C minus G. So if we know in a closed economy, I is equal to Y minus C minus G, and we know in a closed economy, S, savings is equal to Y minus C minus G, we now find that in a closed economy, savings will be equal to investment. Why do we wanna know this? Because now we can start playing around with what happens when we look at taxes or we look at the components that come into savings. Taxes are reality we all must face. And taxes will take away from what? The GDP. Because your GDP minus your taxes, minus the consumption, plus your taxes minus whatever the government spends is gonna be equal to how much savings is left. So in theory, if you were to think about it this way, you think about it and you say to yourself, okay, we've got this taxes. If Y minus T minus C is equal to private savings because it says the income that we have left after paying our taxes and after consuming, okay, C and T, 
and public savings, which is the tax revenue coming in, minus what government, the government pays out, we can then look at the components that make up the national savings rate, which is a combination of private savings, what you and I have left over after we pay taxes and consumption, which is my Y minus T minus C, and the public savings, which is taxes minus what the government spends. So when we have those pieces, we can put them together or we can pull them apart. So we can either have private savings, Y minus T minus C plus T minus G, or we can take out the taxes and we can look at Y minus C minus G. Both are exactly the same equation, right? Because you've got a minus C and a minus T and a plus T, they're crossing each other out. But by splitting them apart, you're able to take a look at what the pieces are of the savings. By putting them together, you can see what's happening with taxes negated. Because if you think about it, taxes come into the government, what they, what they spend goes back out, the G, taxes are taken away from the consumer. So you end up with the equations and such. And these are the equations we're gonna to need to remember. We have I, which is our investments. We have Y minus C minus G. Or if we wanna look at it as a two pieces, we can look at our personal consumption, personal savings, plus the, the, other, the public savings, which is equal to the national savings. So Y minus T minus C is your what? Your public savings. And T minus G is equal to, I'm sorry, Y minus T minus C is equal to the personal savings, and T minus G is equal to the public savings. So savings equals investment in a closed economy, as we talked about, but those are the equations we need to keep in track of. A budget surplus is when the T minus G is in excess. In other words, we bring in the tax revenue T and the government spends less. So if T was $100 and G was $50, then you'd have a surplus of 50. You have public savings. The, savings, the public has a savings, which is thus known as a budget surplus. A budget deficit is when there's a shortfall. In other words, the amount of tax revenue that's brought in and the amount the government spends is such that the government is spending more than the taxes coming in. So you get a negative number. So what that means is G is a bigger number than T. So when you take G and you subtract T, you're ending up with a negative public savings, right? A deficit. We're in, we're, we are not necessarily at equilibrium. Private savings is the income remaining after the household has paid all their taxes and their consumptions. And what could you do with these? Well, remember we talked about some of the things you could do about it in that video that you saw earlier. You could buy corporate bonds and equ or equities. You can purchase certificates of deposit from a bank. You can buy shares in a mutual fund. You can let it accumulate in a savings or checking account. Investment is a purchase of new capital. Examples of investment would be things like General Motors, spending, 250 million to build a new factory. What are they doing? They're investing in the purchase of new capital that then is in turn going to do what? Produce things or make things. You might buy a computer for your business. What are you doing? That computer is part of the capital that is going to make your business grow. Or your parents may spend a large amount of money to have a new house built. They are investing in a capital. Now remember, in economics, investment isn't just the purchase of stocks and bonds. Stocks and bonds have a totally different entity. They are not necessarily considered to be investments. This is the part that always is confusing because when you think about the way that we're talking today about the stock market, we're talking about people's investment. But economic investment is in terms of new capital going into new structures. Now, the economic situation we're in today, this may be true as well. but the investment, when economists talk about it, they're talking about investment in things like a plant, computer equipment for a business, maybe some kind of robotics, um, maybe new bandwidth to get the orders through faster. These would all be investments a business would make. 
Investments, when we talk about the stock market, is not necessarily economic investments. So in summary, for this chapter, this part of the chapter, remember I'm gonna give this in two pieces, the financial system is made up of many types of institutions. There's the stock market and the bond market. There's banks, there's mutual funds. These are all ways that people can take their savings and invest it into things. That is not an economic investment, that's just what we call investing. National savings equals private savings, the things that we have, minus public savings. Why? Because everything that we've saved as individuals, minus what the government has saved, and sometimes that's a deficit, pulls out how much money is available into the economy in general to work. For instance, if you think about it, if there's a lot of savings going on with individuals and banks have that ability to use that money and to save it and to, to, to put it into the economy and to use it for things like mortgages and other things. However, at the same time, the government is spending more than they're bringing in the taxes. The government has to go someplace to borrow the additional money and they'll have to go to the private sector to borrow that money. And when they borrow that money from the private sector it's sucking it out. So the entire national savings is reduced. And we'll see this a little more when we look at the second part of this. We're looking at a closed economy here. Remember, there was no exports and imports. That adds a whole other case of, well, I guess, into the case. Uh, what would you want to call it? A widget into the case. In a closed economy, the national savings is going to equal the investment because there is no thing else happening. There is nowhere else that you can get money other than the national savings. And thus, when you want to invest into your business, in other words, buy a new computer system, increase your bandwidth, go to robotics, um, change your production, all of those investments in capital have to be offset by where the money can come from. In a close economy, it can't come from outside the, the US, so it has to come from where we have our national savings. So we can only invest what we have. And the financial system, what we talked about originally, when we talked about what? The actual systems that were available in the economy, the financial institutions, they're the intermediary that allow us to take that national savings and do what? Provide to the borrowers investments so that you can buy that house, et cetera.